Hey everybody, uh, welcome to uh, SSDP's Campus Change Campaign panel. Thank you all for coming. I am Amber Langston. I am one of three outreach directors for Students for Sensible Drug Policy. And uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. Thank, thank you guys for being here bright and early at uh, noon. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I know how it goes at these conferences, so it's a defense challenge. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, thank, thank you guys for being here. We weren't really sure exactly what to expect with this panel today because I think we weren't sure if it was going to be all students or there were going to be a few others. It looks like we do have a, a handful of other folks who maybe aren't as intimately involved with SSDP as the rest of us. So uh, we'll try and give a little background about who we are and what it is that we do and what our campus change campaigns are all about. But it looks like, uh, how many students do we have in the audience right now, actually? Awesome, awesome. And who of you are in SSDP chapters? Yeah, and uh, we've even got some alumni, I think, in here as well, so people who've been involved with SSCP um, with lots of wonderful words of advice for us later. Um, but I think probably what we'll do is, like I said, give a background of what, who we are with SSCP and what our Campus Change campaigns are about, um, and John and Stacia, um, who are our other two outreach directors, they'll introduce themselves in a moment, um, what we giving examples of campaigns that they run on their campus when they were chapter leaders and then we'll probably open things up for a little bit of question and answer and discussion since a lot of the people in here are students it seems like it would be a really good opportunity for us to learn from each other i know some of you have been doing campaigns on your own campus or are going to be doing campaigns on your campus so i think there's a lot of knowledge in this room and we definitely want to share it all so um you know, it's not just uh, us up here preaching to you guys, so. Um, with that. Um, students for Sensible Drug Policy is an international grassroots network of students who are concerned about the impact of drug, of, of drug abuse has on our communities, but who also know that the war on drugs is failing our generation and our society. SSDP mobilizes and empowers young people to participate in the political process, pushing for sensible policies to achieve a safer and more just future, while fighting back against counterproductive drug war policies, particularly those that directly harm students and youth, which is most all drug policies, I would say. So, um, <clears throat> uh, one thing that you'll notice in our mission statement, obviously we are a drug policy we're worried about uh, the effects of the drug war, but it, part of our, our mission here is to really mobilize and empower youth and students to, to get involved in, in politics and what that looks like and how uh, they can be effective leaders for social change um, in, in many areas of society. So we are really just, you know, the youth-based social justice movement. Like, we're the ones, so, yeah. Yeah. Woo! A lot of our students are very active in a lot of different um, organizations and groups as well. And so, yeah, we're, we're, the, we're the seeds for reform. And um, part of getting involved in the political process, well, for us, because we're young people just just getting to know what it's like out there in the world. And, you know, they frankly didn't tell us very much in high school about how politics works. And so we use our campuses as a sort of training ground to uh, learn how to get involved in politics, how to work with your student government, how to create change and, and uh, build allies whenever you're, you're doing a campaign and a movement. So, um, so the, the campuses really serve as a, an initial step for getting involved in politics, and that's what we're trying to do with our campus change campaigns. Um, we work on a lot of different issues because we are a grassroots organization. Uh, it's our job as outreach directors to really help you guys uh, do what you want to do on your campus. So we're not going to tell you what campaign to run. These are some of the things that our chapters have been working on uh, or, or have accomplished. Uh, dorm eviction policies, dorm privacy, Good Samaritan medical amnesty policies, judicial processes on campus, law enforcement involvement in 
Leasing Campus Drug Policy, Marijuana and Alcohol uh, Penalty Equalization Initiatives, off-campus jurisdiction for drug policies, parental notification policies, designated drive and safe ride programs, suspension and expulsion policies, harm reduction education, and treatment and prevention accessibility and funding. So we work on quite a variety of issues on our campus. Um, and right now, sort of our highlighted campaign that many of our chapters have been working on, we've had a lot of success and we're getting some sort of solidarity, I think, among uh, different campuses trying to work on things. I know Texas is wanting to uh, do a unified effort with the Good Samaritan Medical Amnesty Policy. And what those are, are basically instituting on your campus something official that says students aren't going to get in trouble if somebody needs to call for help in a, an emergency situation. So, you know, if somebody's overdosing, and that could be even underage drinking, that is illegal. Uh, drug use, and so a lot of students are afraid to call for help whenever somebody might be in trouble, and a few moments of hesitation could cost someone's life. So that's something that we've found to resonate well with some of the other organizations on on campus. Maybe you know, health and wellness see us more as an ally than, than a threat sometimes. Um, you know, which some people sometimes have that sort of initial hesitancy. Uh, before they get to know us, but uh, we're great people, so once you get to know us, things are a lot better. So, um, uh, I guess I'll turn this over to uh, John, sure. and you can talk about some of the things that, that you've done. Thanks, Amber. Hey guys, I am John Perry. I work uh, in our San Francisco office. I'm our outreach director for the Western region and the uh, Mountain Plains region. So, um, I ran two campaigns on uh, my college campus when I was running an SSDP chapter. And the first one was during my first semester as a, as a president and founder of an SSDP chapter. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and this was in, in regards to the HEA aid elimination penalty. Um, does anyone, anyone here know what that is? Great. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the HEA aid elimination penalty is the law that denies students their financial aid if they have a um, drug conviction. So uh, there is a coalition called CHEER, the Coalition for Higher Education Act Reform, and you were able to get your student government to sign on to this coalition. There were about 115 student governments at the time uh, that had signed on to it. And it just seemed like it's such a no-brainer to me that I really didn't think my student government would be against it. And I showed up there with uh, the full intentions of them being supportive of it, and uh, I was really surprised uh, that the resolution failed. Um, and. The next day, uh, I checked the school newspaper, and on the front page, there's this slanderizing article that says, you know, campus drug policy change, uh, uh, you know, fails in student government, which, for one, wasn't what we were trying to do at all. We weren't trying to change any student government. Um, and <coughs> what we were trying to do was get our student government to sign on to a resolution. Uh, the article had no um, quotes from SSDP members, uh, or chapter leaders, uh, they had not contacted us. Um, they had only contacted student government senators who had voted against um, our resolution uh, for comments. And um, what I noticed is what that, that the person who had wrote this article uh, actually had taken such, was so, so against us that he took such little time uh, to find anything out about the organization that he'd actually plagiarized about four paragraphs from a um, article at the beginning of the semester that was written about our uh, us becoming a new chapter. Um, and so I pointed this out, and um, immediately I was given a full page uh, letter to the editor of my school newspaper that, that printed the next week, um, explaining exactly what actually happened in um, the student government uh, meeting that night, exactly what we were trying to, to uh, accomplish here with this resolution. Um, and from that point on, things were a whole lot better for us. <laughs> Once we were able to kind of call this guy out, um, and he uh, actually you know, wasn't able to write for the school newspaper anymore, um, he uh, ended up contacting me because we had a blog about it um, on, our, on our blog, and he showed up for a job interview. And uh, as soon as he walked in, uh, the interviewer had that blog post on his desk. And uh, needless to say, he didn't get the job. Um, so what happened, and this is a really, uh, I think, cool example of a way to turn around a, uh, a bad, you know, a bad campaign, a failed campaign. 
uh, the next semester, the next semester, we were able to print this resolution back. And with that, that you know, letter to the editor that I was able to get printed, uh, we were able to you know get a lot more student support on there, draw a lot more attention to it. And the next uh, time it came around, it was uh, approved unanimously, um, and our student government was now part of this coalition, um, and we raised a lot of awareness on our campus through this. Um, and that's just an example of, of how you do that. And that, that was building coalitions, really, how we did that. We were able to, uh, once that, that article was, was printed, you know, we reached out to political science teachers. Um, we reached out to other groups on campus about you know, what's going on and how this appeals to them. And they all showed up to that student government meeting in support of us. And I think that that was really essential to creating some, some change in that climate. Um, the second uh, campaign that, that I ran, uh, which, was, which was much more successful because uh, I had the experience of running that first one, and I was able to contact SSDP's national staff and get some information about them, uh, from them about how to run a successful campaign. Um, this was the Good Samaritan Policy uh, campaign. And the very first thing I did was sat down with my administrators. And uh, this is something that we recommend for all of our campaigns um, because for a variety of reasons. Um, the first one is who knows if your administrators already agree with you or not. They might already support whatever policy you're going to uh, want to institute, you know? So you might not need to do a whole lot of coalition building and petitioning and student government resolutions. And you're also not going to create that us versus them sort of mentality. Um, your administrators are going to be eager to work with you and, and hear what you have to say, you know? So it, it creates, a, I think, a relationship of respect. Um, so the first thing we did was sat down with them. Um, they were supportive. They said, that this is great, you know, we really like this, but what we want to see um, uh, is some student support. We want to find out that students like it, and we'd like to talk with um, you know, our campus safety officers and our campus EMTs about this as well. So I went to our campus EMTs and talked to them, and they said to me, and this is you know, medical, uh, emergency medical technicians, and the um, first thing they said to me was, well, if you have a policy that's going to make it easier for us to get to students who need medical attention faster, then we're fully supportive of this. So we had them on board. Campus safety said the same thing. Um, we went to a bunch of other student groups on campus, explained to them what we're trying to do, they were on board. Um, and then what we did was we carried out a, pe a petition. Um, my school had about 2,000 students who were able to get about 500 signatures in support of this, so um, a very nice chunk of the, the student body there. Um, and that led us to a student government resolution calling on the administration to pass it. Um, and we were able to pass that. And then, um, you know, a couple more meetings with the administration, laid out a good policy, uh, showed them examples of a, a study called a, by, done by Cornell University on the effectiveness of medical emergency policies. Um, and once we had you know, solid proof and evidence of uh, what we're looking for and how this works, um, showed the student support, uh, it was adopted to our student code of conduct. And this is a medical, or Good Samaritan policy, which covers um, all drugs, and uh, there's no limit on how many times you can uh, receive uh, amnesty. So it's one of the, the better policies. Um, so basically what I just did was give you an overview of, of, of my campaigns. And is going to do the same thing of the things that she's done. Um, and then we're going to get into uh, the actual strategies and, and talk a little bit more about uh, how those go. Cool. Thanks, John. Hey, um, my name is uh, Stacia Kosner. I work in Washington, D.C. for Students for Sensible Drug Policy. I'm the Outreach Director for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic Regions. Um, I, uh, I'm actually the newest addition to SSD. Staff. I just got hired at the beginning of the summer, um, at, right after I graduated from the University of Maryland, where I was uh, president of the SSDP chapter there for two years. Um, and when I first got involved with SSDP, um, actually the, the leaders were already uh, running in a campaign to equalize the penalties on campus for uh, underage drinking and um, marijuana possession. So, um, you know, I started working with them on that, and then uh, we uh, gathered petitions as well uh, to get a question put added to the uh, student government election ballot, um, you know, that everybody votes on uh, every year. It's like election but for campuses. Um, and we got a question on there that asked students if they think uh, the penalties for uh, marijuana possession on campus should be reduced to be no more punitive than um, underage drinking <coughs> offenses on campus. Um, it passed with 65 percent. We were really uh, happy about that. But then, um, you know, uh, then the summer came and uh, our administration basically didn't act on it because, um, you know, student government resolutions, uh, while they're symbolic, don't actually, uh, in, a, in, a lot of, in a lot of college campuses, don't actually have the power to make a concrete policy change. Um, so I set up a meeting with um, 
the uh, uh, Vice President of Student Affairs. Uh, my my uh, sort of strategy was starting out with this was to just go for the jugular, to just, you know, find out who the person with the most power was and meet with them and tell them that they need to implement this policy because 65% of the students wanted it to be that way, so they should act on it. Um, and she basically told me that uh, I was starting way too high up in the uh, food chain, if you will, and she told me that I needed to go back down and navigate a whole bunch of uh, bureaucracy and red tape and to demonstrate student support and to demonstrate that this was needed, to have resolutions passed by our student government association and a residence hall association, um, which we, uh, we did, and they, uh, they passed resolutions after the vote. Um, and so I worked you know, um, on that for a while and uh, the sort of us versus them mentality that John mentioned, uh, <laughs> I sort of had an experience that uh, with, with uh, creating an us versus them mentality with the administration, I got myself elected to the um, University Senate, which was a, a, a governing body with 90% uh, faculty and 10% students, so it's clearly outnumbered. And then I, you know, tried to uh, um, introduce a resolution to affect these policies in the Senate. Uh, that was not extremely well received. <laughs> um, and we've also, we also had a lot of uh, media coverage. I actually have a, uh, uh, an editorial up from our uh, campus uh, newspaper that they wrote about our strategy that we use later. Um, and because our administration, basically long story short, long story short, our administration was just giving us the runaround. They would say, oh, I don't have the power to change that, or, oh, you know, uh, you have to talk to somebody else, or you have to do something else. And I was following everything that they told me to do. I was like, okay, you want us to bring you a vote? We'll bring you a vote. You want us to bring you student government resolutions? Done. And you know, just went through all of the channels, but still they didn't, you know, uh, the administration is, is hesitant to adopt any uh, sort of policy change on that. Um, so then actually something unique that we did at University of Maryland was we um, uh, met with the Department of Residence Life who told us that uh, you don't, the resident assistants don't have to call the police in cases involving marijuana, which is you know, where a lot of the uh, trouble that students got in came from. So the police were called for you know, minor marijuana violations. Um, so we talked to the Department of Residence Life. They said that it's not by law that uh, uh, the staff needs to call the police in cases of marijuana. So uh, we wrote up, SSDP wrote up this letter um, urging the RAs, the resident assistants, to uh, use their discretion uh, because of the you know, severe negative impact that an arrest can have on students. Um, and we slipped it under every single resident assistant's door. Got in a little bit of trouble for that. You should probably check with your administration before doing things like that. <laughs> um, but you know, it was a really direct way of you know, kind of getting at it, and that's what this uh, editorial is about. They, uh, they, I, mean, I just want to read this one line in it. Um, blah, blah, blah. No one, including the SGA, has ever really effectively done what SSTP has done, which is to go through the regular channels until there's nowhere left to go, then get pissed off and take it to the people who matter, the grassroots. So that's you know uh, basically what we did. We did take it to the grassroots, and that uh, just uh, brings my mind to something that I wanted to mention to you guys. We have a, uh, I don't know, pretty extensive um, grassroots guide uh, online and you know, uh, available in hard copy format as well to help students run different um, campaigns on their, on their campuses. Um, going on a bit of a tangent there, so I'll just uh, tell you, we worked on the, uh, so we worked on the equalization of the marijuana uh, penalties. It didn't go well. Students definitely supported it. Administrators, administrators not so much, and it was never uh, codified in the in the policy. Um, then we started to work on uh, Good Samaritan policies, which uh, um, you know we're gonna uh, I think explain a little bit more later. Um, and uh, Irina Alexander, are you in the room? I think this all her? No. Okay. Well, um, Irina Alexander is the president of uh, she's the president of the University of Maryland chapter now. And she's really done a great job of like picking up where I left off with the administrators, with the work we were doing, um, you know, and has done you know a lot of the same things, and is you know they're getting more and more clo closer to success um, with the Good Samaritan policies at, at University of Maryland. But you know, there were, I actually uh, I ran for the Senate once, and you know served a term, and then when I went to run for re-election, because uh, you know I was sort of known as the girl that would bring up drug policy in the Senate meetings, um, they, uh, 
looked in, they, you know, uh, looked into my record, and because of a uh, police encounter I had when I was a freshman uh, for less than half a gram of marijuana, um, I won't go into that. But um, you know, <laughs> um, but they uh, they told me that I could not run for re-election because I had this on my disciplinary record, which of course I it's, it's absurd because I had it on my disciplinary record the year before when I ran and was elected and it was fine. But they barred me from running again, so that was a big deal on campus, and then, you know the newspapers wrote a lot of things about that. But then that really contributed to the whole us versus them thing, and you know they just didn't want to hear anything, you know, about this issue anymore. They were just like, okay, get, get out of here. We don't want you coming, coming to these meetings anymore. Um, and that was not the best way to go about things. <laughs> you know, it's very much more difficult to get things done when, uh, you know, your administrators aren't on the same page with you. Um, and so Irina has done a great job of sort of starting anew with them and, uh, you know, has built up those relationships that I somehow destroyed. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I was also going to point out, I don't think she's here, Stacy Fontana from Boston, you guys are not here? Anyways. She's on her way home right now. Oh, she's on her way home right now. Bummer. Okay. Well, uh, Stacy uh, just um, very recently, in the last couple weeks, got a, uh, a Good Samaritan medical emergency policy passed on her campus at Boston. Um, and I, we actually have copies of uh, the card that their their administration was so supportive that they are funding, they adopted it, you know, it's it's very comprehensive, and uh, they're also paying for, you know, this campaign to get the word out, because a lot, a big part about Good Samaritan policies is making sure every student on that campus knows about it, because otherwise it doesn't work. So they're uh, printing out these cards that, you know, uh, explain the, the drug and alcohol policy and the medical embassy policy, and then, uh, gives a website and it has a, uh, a phone number for on campus, so you can pick one of, one of those up if you like. Um, and I think those were the, uh, cam I think that about does it for the campaigns that I was going to talk about. Um, so with that, I think we're going to delve into sort of a more strategic aspect of how you do this on a more general basis. Most important things to consider when you're running your first campaign or, or any campaign, um, when you want to uh, discuss with discuss this stuff with administrators. Um, you have to try to understand what their concerns are and uh, what you know. Put yourself in their shoes, sort of thing. Um, and I think the Good Samaritan policy uh, campaign has really uh, been able to. It, it's been so successful because it's so um, genuine and because people can understand that that this is this is sensible policy and that this makes sense and they understand that binge drinking is a problem on college campuses they know that alcohol poisonings um, and overdoses are a problem on college campuses when you come and you present that to them uh, you, you come and you present a possible solution to this problem um, they're definitely open to hearing it and that's a great way to frame it and um, uh, Boston University really did a fantastic job of that you know they, they Draw, draw, drew attention to um, the sexual assaults um, and amnesty for, for that, uh, for people who are intoxicated. Um, and uh, they also drew attention to, um, you know, once this policy is put into place, what do we do? Um, so there's an issue with, with the Good Samaritan policies, and that's, uh, well, administrators are saying, hey, this is our protocol already. We already do this. We don't um, have a written policy that says we don't punish students who call 911, but we also don't usually punish them. And that was pretty much the case over at BU. Um, however, what, what they did after they um, put this into place, you know, the, the point of having it become an actual policy and not a protocol is because if it's not written down, then students don't understand what it is. You know, uh, they don't know that um, what the circumstances are, and if your protocol, you know, last week um, was to give a student amnesty, and if this week it's not going to be amnesty. So that's why we're pushing for um, the policies. And when you can really explain that to administrators, uh, the majority of them are, are quite receptive to it. Um, and then there's also the follow-up campaign to that sort of stuff. And um, uh, what Stacy, uh, what Stacia was showing that um, the, the Boston University chapter created, you know, the point of this is, okay, you've got this great policy now, um, a great way to uh, convince administrators uh, even beforehand is have some sort of follow-up plan like this. Be like, well, you know, once we have established a Good Samaritan policy, let's also educate students about the signs of alcohol overdose and alcohol poisoning. Um, 
the signs of um, you know when you need to call 911 and let's tell them about this policy. So these cards actually describe the policy, describe um, where you should call, what, what you should do in the event of, of one of these situations. I think that that's also a really fantastic way to um, convince administrators uh, to be on your side. Um, so that. And I mean, it, it seems sort of obvious, but one of the first things you want to do is survey your landscape, figure out what's going on in your campus, okay, and what's the climate there. Um, and you have uh, school drug policies. You, know, you have a student uh, code of conduct, a student handbook, which describes you know your school's uh, policies. Whether you get kicked out of the dorms for a first time marijuana offense, whether there's a three strike rule, whether there's a good Samaritan policy or not. Um, if you're on a college campus. Find out what your drug policies are. Um, it's really, really easy to do. If you can't find it in the school book, uh, in, the, in the handbook, then you can ask an administrator, um, someone in judicial affairs, and they'll be able to describe your policy, their policies um, to you. And from there, you want to, uh, you know, take that information, bring it to a chapter meeting, um, and discuss it with your members um, or your coalition, and uh, figure out which policies you want to change and how you want to change them. And we'll have to apologize for the, uh, the formatting of our PowerPoint here. It, uh, it got a little messed up. Um, and then you want to determine your campaign. I mean, this is, this is once you've checked in with administrators and found out what exactly is wrong with your campus policies, um, you're going to figure out how you're going to fix them. And um, there could be a policy on your campus that's already bad. It's already there, and you want to change that policy. Um, you know, students, um, this is something uh, uh, that Stacia had to deal with, was students get evicted from their dorms for marijuana possession offenses. Um, they're proposing a new drug policy. My campus proposed, um, and it, it actually wasn't the, the school, so this was very difficult, uh, where you had a local uh, law enforcement who, uh, uh, because we had on-campus uh, security, who were not actually police officers, they would typically confiscate marijuana and um, give it to the police and sanction the student um, through the school and not give the police any names. The police got, uh, with, with a new police chief, within one year, he, uh, he <laughs> contacted our administration and threatened them to arrest campus safety officers for possession of drugs, obstructing, obstruction of justice, um, if they were to do this. And that if they even suspected drug use on campus, they needed to call, um, uh, they needed to call a uh, police officer to come on campus. So, um, we fought really hard to change that. Um, uh, we did to an extent. We, we have uh, changed a little bit, but um, it's still continuing. Um, and then this is the, uh, you know, you have that opportunity to install a new policy as well. Something that you, you see that isn't there and you think that should be there. And like I said, you know, um, uh, my first step was to sit down with some administrators, um, decision makers. And these are the people who um, are going to make uh, the, the decisions surrounding your policies and whether it should be implemented or not. Um, and you know, when it comes down to it, whether you have a student government resolution or a signature from every student on your campus, they don't have to enact this stuff. So you know, it's great to sit down with them, build a good relationship, and um, um, you know, it's it's not good for just passing that first campaign, but it's also good for future campaigns that you want to work on. Um, so. You know, you, you gain a lot of credibility uh, by doing this because, uh, for one, you're not attacking them at first. You're not, you know, saying that they ha that they have enacted a bad policy that, you know, that things are their fault or they're the ones causing the problems, etc. You know, you don't want to frame things like that. You want to say, hey, this is a mutual problem that we're both concerned about. Um, this is an issue that uh, affects us as students and you as an administration. And here is a solution to it. Um, uh, so you want to be able to to do that, and they will greatly respect that. Um, in almost every circumstance that, that we've heard from our our um, members, and then we passed about uh, over 15, uh, you know, Good Samaritan policies um, and a handful more uh, uh, campus change policies as well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> using these um, these strategies. So, and the the reason for doing this is you want to try to establish that first relationship, and it might not work. Um, you know, there is that possibility that things just don't work out. Um, and that's when you want to, uh, you know, really start your campaign and really start um, getting that student support, building a coalition, um, and uh, getting a solid campaign that will convince your administrators. On our on our website, and then um, we uh, compiled all of the. Uh, uh, okay, so let me. 
Hi, on me. Rewind for a second. So there's a student governing body, the Residence Hall Association, that um, is made up of students, and they are basically like a student government for people who live on campus. So they, um, you know, have the power <laughs> to, uh, you know, make um, to to pass resolutions, um, that, you know, that won't result in immediate uh, policy changes, but that you know are recommendations, and they come from the students, and you know, democratically, democratic process and everything. So. Uh, we had a, a resolution introduced in the Residence Hall Association supporting our, um, the, the change to, to uh, equal, equalize the um, penalties for marijuana on campus. And uh, at first, we were not getting very positive responses from the uh, representatives who were students, and it was you know, sort of surprising to us. Um, so we uh, you know, encouraged our chapter members to find out who their uh, representative was and lobby them like they would any, you know, at, at the federal or state level. And you know, I see Gretchen laughing. I guess it does. It is a little silly, um, you know, when you think about it like that. But um, you know, we sort of did micro lobbying, and that was, you know, we uh, like I said on our website, we compiled like, you know, if you live in this hall, this is your uh, representative, and you should email them and tell them to support this. Um, and like, <laughs> we actually, um, and John was mentioning coalition building. We brought, I think, uh, representatives from something like twenty or. 25 different student organizations to say, you know, uh, who was represented at the beginning of the Residence Hall Association meeting where they were going to vote on this, uh, this resolution. And, you know, so like people are going around, they're asking just to say, uh, you know, what student organizations are represented. There's like Photography Club, Democrats, Republicans, you know, uh, I, I can't even think right now of some more examples. But, um, you know, the room was packed. SSDP packed the room. And, you know, we really put pressure on them to, um, you know, uh, uh, support this, and that was a, a lot of a lot of that was because they received 10, 15 emails about you know this legislation and this you know student governing body that they just thought they'd put on their resume and attend a meeting or two every month. And students don't lobby other student representatives in the residence hall association. Like it's not, you know, they don't get people uh, you know advocating for one thing or another usually. So that was you know something that they definitely took note of. Um, and you know, uh, you guys can read, not read the slide to you, but um, you know, uh, just utilizing uh, tools on, on the internet. Uh, oh, there's Irina, I'm gonna call you out. Um, <laughs> Irina's doing a great job right now with uh, IamGoodSam.com. It's uh, the Maryland statewide um, Good Samaritan policy. She's actually uh, interning for DPA this, this semester in DC and uh, working on uh, state level Good Samaritan policy um, things like that, and uh, you know, on IamGoodSam.com, it's a place where uh, parents or students or any member of the community can sign on to the petition, and uh, they can also join our list. You know, if they want to be updated about about uh, what's going on with the campaign, or if they want to see if they can do anything about it. Um, yes, and uh, I think that's about it. That's on IamGoodSam. Um, I think I'm going to go to the next one. Facebook. Right. <laughs> Facebook. You guys, uh, mo most of you are students, so I'm not going to spend too long telling you how to, you know, create events and invite people to them and post status updates and encourage people to, you know, uh, do whatever action it is that's needed to create that change on your campus, whether it's lobbying or whether it's showing up at a meeting or whether it's, uh, you know, uh, signing an online petition uh, or even, you know, volunteering to uh, go collect petition signatures out out on the field. Um, so yeah, you guys know. Uh, John, did you want to say something about? Well, how, how many of you guys are familiar with with Facebook? I don't know, it sounds like a silly question. Right? How many of you guys are familiar with using it um, for campaigning and organizing? Okay, great. So you know how to use. So so great. I just wanted to make sure that the majority of the people understand that. So for those of you who don't, Facebook allows you to. One, create a group. So you can create a group for your SSDP chapter. Then you can associate events with that. So let's say hey, your meeting's coming up or uh, um, uh, you're bringing a speaker from law enforcement against prohibition. You create that event, you message and invite a lot of members. They have all that information right there on their calendar and it keeps them up to date. So it's a really, I don't, I don't know what SSDP would be if it weren't for Facebook. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna um, transition, talk a little bit about working with uh, student government. Um, this is definitely something that I have 
experience with, um, and you know, both from the inside and from the outside. You know, before I was uh, elected to the University Senate, I uh, tried as hard as I could to contact you know all of the student representatives, build those relationships with them. Um, it's very, very important. You know, if you're not if you don't if you're not on a first name basis with the student uh, government president on your campus, you need to go home and do that right now. <laughs> you need to find out who these people are. You know, make the connections with them. Uh, you know, determine how they feel about uh, these issues and, you know, how you guys can work together. Um, you know, because a lot of times you won't be able to elect the SSDP president into the University Senate. You know, um, but it, I, again, that's, um, that is something else you can do is uh, encourage your members to run for um, elected positions on campus so that they can, you know, you can sort of cut out the middleman. You don't have to, uh, you know, meet with everybody and determine who's going to take a stand on this and whatever. You know, if you have an SSDP chapter member who is already <coughs> understanding of this issue and will advocate for this issue, and then they get elected, then they can, uh, you know, really go far and it uh, streamlines the process a lot. Um, and, okay, uh, mm Amber's going to... Yeah, I just wanted to sort of jump in really quickly. Um, on that, I, whenever I was running a, a chapter on campus at the University of Missouri, we actually didn't do a, a campus change campaign. It hadn't quite, the SSDP wasn't focusing on things in, in quite the same way at that time. And um, I ended up actually, our chapter was very involved with a uh, local initiative for uh, medical marijuana and marijuana decriminalization. And so, um, so I did some community uh, campus, or community, uh, campaigns, but um, anyway, it was very instrumental to have already done a little bit of work with our student government before going to the community because um, we had passed uh, resolutions against the aid elimination penalty of the Higher Education Act, um, you know, which is a logical thing, a lot of, all, we encourage all of our chapters to do, um, and because we had that support already with that resolution passed, you know, people were aware of the issue, they knew about it, and we were then able to go back and say, hey, since you guys you know, support this, uh, how about supporting this uh, decriminalization law that will make it so that students wouldn't get a, a state or federal conviction and they therefore would still be able to get their financial aid and you should be in support of that. And there was a little bit of debate, but because we had set that precedent already, we were then able to go back and have that and then go to the community and say, hey, everybody at the University of Missouri uh, Missouri Student Association and Graduate Professional Council support uh, marijuana decriminalization and um, that was a really big bolster of support for the community. Um, so just thinking beyond campus whenever you are starting to do those campaigns, it's really great to have built that support um, and to have uh, made those allies with key people um, on, on your campus. So. Yeah, and just uh, one more note I think on uh, working with student government more generally speaking, is that these, you know, uh, making, the, making these connections and bringing this issue up to your student government is so important because, you know, uh, these are the future leaders of tomorrow. These people are going to probably, likely, be real politicians one day. And, you know, or, or if not, they're going to be professionals in some way. They're clearly in, involved and active in the political process. So, you know, uh, bringing this issue to them that they might not have ever thought about in this way before, you know, uh, that will stay with them even when they, you know, go on past college and, you know, go into their career. And, you know, uh, there could be a senator one day who, you know, uh, knows about or takes this particular stance on drug policy issue because, you know, he saw an SSDP flyer when he was on campus or when he was in student government when he was in college, you know, an SSDP chapter really impressed him or, you know, brought the issue uh, to them. So that's another good thing about working with student government. Just um, to, to jump in uh, quickly, uh, one of the last things mentioned on that slide was, what if your student government uh, is, you know, unresponsive and they don't care? Um, we've had a few SSTP chapters who have quite literally taken over their student government. And um, that is something I highly suggest. Either way, just get involved in your student government. Think about it. I mean, if you have one or two members of your chapter who hold a, a, a Senate seat in student government, um, that is incredible, you know, leverage right there. That's that's a lot of um, of swing that you can have, and, you know, and it, it makes it easier for you to bring resolutions, to bring discussions and topics of this nature to um, a student government who has, you know, before your SSDP chapter probably never discussed student drug policy. Yeah, absolutely. 
moving right along uh, to lobbying, um, I talked about a, li a little bit about this earlier. Um, what what we did, uh, you know, on that micro level, you know, lobbying uh, to get students to vote in a particular way or another. Um, but you know, lobbying on campus, you know, uh, can and should be approached just like uh, you're lobbying your elected representative, uh, you know, in Washington D.C. or at a district office. Um, you know, it's the same type of strategies and tactics uh, using, uh, you know, phone slams. That actually uh, brings me to mention this. Uh, we have a handout up here that uh, has a whole bunch of resources on it. Um, and on um, our website, uh, we for each one of our campaigns, uh, all of those that we listed, you know, dorm eviction, dorm privacy, all of those. For each one, we have um, uh, uh, talking points, we have sample phone scripts, we have uh, petitions, we have sample student government resolutions, um, and those can all really be very helpful to you if uh, you know you can just download them and tailor them to your campus and to what you know you, you you're trying to achieve. And um, you know we have a lot of uh, definitely uh, valuable resources that can help you when you when you are lobbying um, for campus uh, policy changes. Um, postcards to administrators. Did you do that, John? Postcards uh, to administrators. Well, we we did postcards to administrators during our week our week of action for the HEA elimination penalty. Um, or actually, no, that was to Congress. Um, we actually didn't do um, postcards to administrators. Uh, we did include. Um, postcards to our student government uh, members, not, but not to admins. Uh, we had postcards describing um, the Good Samaritan policy, um, you know, basically a, a frequently asked questions sheet. Uh, yes, on we this. have those too. We have, we have those. Um, and yeah, I, I thought that was pretty effective because it, it, we had this postcard and a packet of information because we wanted these student government members to show up to this resolution meeting with um, some background information on it. And we didn't want them to be able to say, oh, well, we don't have enough time, you know, we didn't get enough information, we want to table this till, you know, next year or create an ad hoc committee to talk about it, you know. Um, so we were able to, you know, for one, it's, it's effective at educating them about it, and for two, it's, it's also effective to put them on the spot and be like, you know, if they're standing up in your student government thing and, um, you know, they're, they're arguing against this and saying they don't have enough information, you can just say, well, I, I gave you information, you just chose not to look at it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that, that I did, but, um, you know, I brought lots and lots, like a litany of information, just binders full to, you know, these meetings to these uh, administrators, and I think uh, I maybe overdid it a bit. Uh, they were a bit overwhelmed, but I don't think anybody actually read through the pages and pages of, you know, research and things that I brought them, but it's definitely good to be as prepared as possible so that that's not an argument they can use to give you the runaround and to not take any action on it. Um, I believe this is where we were going to stop off and, correct, yeah, um, open it up to discussions. Well, let's, um, let's, oh, let's ask a few questions first, um, and uh, who would like to go? Vanessa, please. Um, we started in March, and like we kind of started similar to Amber, how um, with all the politics that was going around in our town. And then this semester, we started outreaching like to you know the college students more and more. But then it brought up on, upon the dilemma um, that a lot of our members, um, I don't want to oust anybody, but a fair majority, you know, use marijuana, and like um, we were worried when we started SSDP, like. We don't want to come off as like potheads, or we want people to take us seriously. But then after like some time, we're just like, you know, whether we're the stereotypical pothead or not, like we are what we are. So um, I was wondering if you could comment on like representing yourself with like reclaiming the word weed and like because one of the, our our members said, well, I, I think when we refer to like marijuana reform or something, we don't refer to marijuana as weed as we should refer to it as marijuana, but we're like, let's reclaim that word, you know what I mean? And like, you, you are what you, you are, so where is that balance, like that fine line between like representing yourself and having people taking you seriously, but then also like just, sure. like yeah, you know, we, we smoke marijuana, or we do this, or we do that, like that's why we want drug policy. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's certainly, um, for what, well, to start it off, there's, there's an issue of stigmatization with, with starting an SSDP chapter. That was something I, I really experienced when I first started it. Um, and the reason that really we, we 
don't try to do the whole, you know, pot leaves on, on our, next to our logos and, and the, the pro-marijuana sort of things because we're not a pro-marijuana or pro-drug organization, we're a, a policy organization. So we don't want to talk about whether drugs are good or bad for you, we want to talk about whether drug policies are effective or whether, if they're ineffective. Um, frankly, I don't care whether you call it weed, pot, or ganja, or whatever you want to, you want to call it, that's, that's fine. Um, I guess, you know, you just want to kind of be able to overcome that stigmatization by staying active, by holding a lot of meetings, by doing the sort of outreach that you're talking about. I think that really puts any of those um, stereotypes to rest very quickly when you're able to say, oh, you know, they said this about us, but our group has more, me more members than their does, and they hold more meetings and events than they do, and they've changed two campus policies now. Uh, or they put on an international drug policy conference in September. Uh, you know, something like that. So uh, those are the ways that I, I see that, and I'm sure these guys can elaborate a little more. Um, I just sort of wanted to quickly touch specifically on, on what you're talking about in terms of the, the term marijuana and versus weed. And um, I, I believe Marijuana Policy Project has done some research um, on this particular issue in the past and that th they have actually sort of reclaimed the word marijuana. Like right now you guys are like, oh, we, we can say marijuana, you know, but we want to say weed. But um, from what I understand that, uh, you know, the, there has previously been a little bit of stigmatization with the term marijuana and, and there's like just by talking about that right now, it's, it's beginning to become more accepted. Um, you know, as a term. So um, I think weed is a little bit further down the line, <laughs> and so it's it's it is an issue of stigmatization, and and people, um, you know, think in symbols, and and if they start to associate us as you know weed as as pot leaves, um, you know, if that symbol is what comes to their mind, then um, you know, then then we do sort of. We have a, uh, I don't know, pretty extensive um, grassroots guide uh, online and, you know, uh, available in hard copy format as well to help students run different um, campaigns on their on their campuses. Um, going on a bit of a tangent there, so I'll just uh, tell you, we worked on the, uh, so we worked on the equalization of the marijuana uh, penalties. It didn't go well. Students definitely supported it. Administrators, administrators not so much, and it was never uh, codified in the in the policy. Um, then we started to work on uh, Good Samaritan policies, which uh, um, you know we're gonna uh, I think explain a little bit more later. Um, and uh, Irina Alexander, are you in the room? I think I saw her. No. Okay. Well, um, Irina Alexander is the president of uh, she's the president of the University of Maryland chapter now. And she's really done a great job of like picking up where I left off with the administrators, with the work we were doing, um, you know, and has done you know a lot of the same things, and is you know they're getting more and more closer to success um, with the Good Samaritan policies at, at University of Maryland. But you know, there was I actually uh, I ran for the Senate once, and you know served a term, and then when I went to run for re-election, because uh, you know I was sort of known as the girl that would bring up drug policy in the Senate meetings, um, they uh, looked in, they, you know, uh, looked into my record and because of a uh, police encounter I had when I was a freshman uh, for less than half a gram of marijuana, um, I won't go into that, but, um, you know, <laughs> um, but they, uh, they told me that I could not run for re-election because I had this on my disciplinary record. Which of course I it's, it's absurd because I had it on my disciplinary record the year before when I ran and was elected and it was fine. But they barred me from running again, so that was a big deal on campus. And then you know the newspapers wrote a lot of things about that. But then that really contributed to the whole us versus them thing. And you know they just didn't want to hear anything you know about this issue anymore. They were just like, okay, get get out of here. We don't want you coming coming to these meetings anymore. Um, and that was not the best way to go about things. <laughs> you know, it's very much more difficult to get things done when, uh, you know, your administrators aren't on the same page with you. Um, and so Irina has done a great job of sort of starting anew with them and, uh, you know, has built up those relationships that I somehow destroyed. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I was also going to point out, I don't think she's here, Stacy Fontana from Boston, you guys not here? Anyways, um, oh, she's on her way home right now. 
Bummer. Oh. Well, uh, Stacy uh, just um, very recently, in the last couple of weeks, got a, uh, a Good Samaritan and Medical Emergency Policy class on her campus at Boston. Um, and I, we actually have copies of uh, the card that their their administration was so supportive that they are funding. They adopted it. You know, it's it's very comprehensive. And uh, they're also paying for you know this campaign to get the word out because a lot a big part about Good Samaritan policies is making sure every student on that campus knows about it because otherwise it doesn't work. So they're uh, printing out these cards that you know uh, explain the the drug and alcohol policy and the medical emergency policy, and then uh, gives a website and it has a, uh, a phone number for on campus so you can pick one of one of those up if you like. Um, and I think those were the, uh, I think that about does it for the campaigns that I was going to talk about. Um, so with that, I think we're going to delve into sort of a more strategic aspect of how you do this on a more general basis. Most important things to consider when you're running your first campaign or, or any campaign. Um, when you want to uh, discuss, with, discuss this stuff with administrators, um, you have to try to understand what their concerns are and uh, what, you know, Put yourself in their shoes, sort of thing. Um, and I think the Good Samaritan policy uh, campaign has really uh, been able to, it, it's been so successful because it's so um, genuine and because people can understand that, that this, is, this is sensible policy and that this makes sense. And they understand that binge drinking is a problem on college campuses. They know that alcohol poisonings um, and overdoses are a problem on college campuses. When you come and you present that to them, uh, you, you come and you present a possible solution to this problem, um, they're definitely open to hearing it. And that's a great way to frame it. And um, uh, Boston University really did a fantastic job of that. You know, they, they drew, drew, drew attention to um, the sexual assaults um, and amnesty for, for that, uh, for people who are intoxicated. Um, and uh, they also drew attention to, um, you know, once this policy is put into place, what do we do? Um, so there's an issue with, with the Good Samaritan policies, and that's, uh, well, administrators are saying, hey, this is our protocol already. We already do this. We don't um, have a written policy that says we don't punish students who call 911, but we also don't usually punish them. And that was pretty much the case over at BU. Um, however, what, what they did after they um, put this into place, you know, the, the point of having it become an actual policy and not a protocol is because if it's not written down, then students don't understand what it is, you know? Uh, they don't know that, um, what the circumstances are, and if your protocol, you know, last week um, was to give a student amnesty, and if this week, it's not going to be amnesty. So that's why we're pushing for um, the policies. And when you can really explain that to administrators, uh, the majority of them are, are quite receptive to it. Um, and then there's also the follow-up campaign to that sort of stuff. And um, uh, what Stacy, uh, what Stacia was showing that um, the, the Boston University chapter created, you know, the point of this is, okay, you've got this great policy now, um, a great way to uh, convince administrators uh, even beforehand is have some sort of follow-up plan like this. Be like, well, you know, once we have established a Good Samaritan policy, let's also educate students about the signs of alcohol overdose and alcohol poisoning. Um, the signs of, uh, you know, when you need to call 911, and let's tell them about this policy. So these cards actually describe the policy, describe um, where you should call, what, what you should do in the event of, of one of these situations. I think that that's also a really fantastic way to um, convince administrators uh, to be on your side. Um, so, that. And I mean, it, it seems sort of obvious, but one of the first things you want to do is survey your landscape, figure out what's going on on your campus, okay, and what's the climate there. Um, and you have uh, school drug policies. You, know, you have a student uh, code of conduct, a student handbook, which describes you know your school's uh, policies. Whether you get kicked out of the dorms for a first time marijuana offense, whether there's a three strike rule, whether there's a good Samaritan policy or not. Um, if you're on a college campus. Find out what your drug policies are. Um, it's really, really easy to do. If you can't find it in the school book, uh, in, the, in the handbook, then you can ask an administrator, um, someone in judicial affairs, and they'll be able to describe your policy, their policies um, to you. And from there, you want to, uh, you know, take that information, bring it to a chapter meeting, um, and discuss it with your members uh, or your coalition, and uh, figure out which policies you want to change and how you want to change them. And we'll have to apologize for the, uh, the formatting of our PowerPoint here. It, uh, it got a little messed up. Um, and then you want to determine your campaign. I mean, this is, this is once you've checked in with administrators and found out what exactly is wrong with your campus policies, um, you're going to figure out how you're going to fix them. And um, 
there could be a policy on your campus that's already bad. It's already there, and you want to change that policy. Um, you know, students. Um, this is something uh, uh, that Stacia had to deal with: was students get evicted from their dorms for marijuana possession offenses. Um, they're proposing a new drug policy. My campus proposed, um, and it, it actually wasn't the, the school, so this was very difficult, uh, where you had a local uh, law enforcement who, uh, uh, because we had on-campus uh, security who were not actually police officers, they would typically confiscate marijuana and um, give it to the police and sanction the student um, through the school and not give the police any names. The police got, um, with, with a new police chief, within one year, he, uh, he, <laughs> contacted our administration and threatened them to arrest campus safety officers for possession of drugs, obstructing, obstruction of justice, um, if they were to do this. And that if they even suspected drug use on campus, they needed to call, um, uh, they needed to call a uh, police officer to come on campus. So um, we fought really hard to change that. Um, uh, we did to an extent. We, we have uh, changed a little bit, but um, it's still continuing. Um, and then. This is the, uh, you know, you have that opportunity to install a new policy as well. Something that you, you see that isn't there and you think that should be there. And like I said, you know, um, uh, my first step was to sit down with some administrators, um, decision makers. And these are the people who um, are going to make uh, the, the decisions surrounding your policies and whether it should be implemented or not. Um, and, you know, when it comes down to it, whether you have a student government resolution or a signature from every student on your campus, they don't have to enact this stuff. So, you know, it's great to sit down with them, build a good relationship, and, um, um, you know, it's, it's not good for just passing that first campaign, but it's also good for future campaigns that you want to work on. Um, so, you know, you, you gain a lot of credibility uh, by doing this because, uh, for one, you're not attacking them at first. You're not, you know, saying that they ha that they have en enacted a bad policy that, you know, that things are their fault or they're the ones causing the problems, et cetera. You know, you don't want to frame things like that. You want to say, hey, this is a mutual problem that we're both concerned about. Um, this is an issue that uh, affects us as students and you as an administration. And here is a solution to it. Um, uh, so you want to be able to, to do that. And they will greatly respect that. Um, in almost every circumstance that, that we've heard from our, our um, members. And then we passed about uh, over 15, uh, you know, Good Samaritan policies um, and a handful more uh, uh, campus change policies as well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Using these, um, these strategies, so. And the, the reason for doing this is you want to try to establish that first relationship and it might not work. Um, you know, there is that possibility that things just don't work out. Um, and that's when you want to, uh, you know, really start your campaign and really start um, getting that student support, building a coalition, um, and uh, getting a solid campaign that will convince your administrators. On our on our website, and then um, we uh, compiled all of the. Uh, uh, okay, so let me hi, let me rewind for a second. So there's a student governing body, the Residence Hall Association, that um, is made up of students and they are basically like a student government for people who live on campus. So they, um, you know, have the power <laughs> to, uh, you know, make, um, to, to pass resolutions, um, that, you know, that won't result in immediate uh, policy changes, but that, you know, are recommendations and they come from the students and, you know, democratically, democratic process and everything. So. Uh, we had a, a resolution introduced in the Residence Hall Association supporting our, um, the, the change to, to uh, equal, equalize the um, penalties for marijuana on campus. And uh, at first, we were not getting very positive responses from the uh, representatives who were students, and it was you know, sort of surprising to us. Um, so we uh, you know, encouraged our chapter members to find out who their uh, representative was and lobby them like they would any, you know, at, at the federal or state level. And you know, I see Gretchen laughing. That I guess it does. It is a little silly, um, you know, when you think about it like that. But um, you know, we sort of did micro lobbying, and that was, you know, we uh, like I said on our website, we compiled like, you know, if you live in this hall, this is your uh, representative, and you should email them and tell them to support this. Um, and like, <laughs> we actually, um, and John was mentioning coalition building. We brought, I think, uh, representatives from something like twenty or. 25 different student organizations to say, you know, uh, who was represented at the beginning of the Residence Hall Association meeting where they were going to vote on this uh, 
this resolution. And, you know, so, like, people are going around, they're asking just to say, uh, you know, what student organizations are represented. There's, like, photography club, Democrats, Republicans, you know, uh, I, I can't even think right now of some more examples. But, um, you know, the room was packed. SSDP packed the room. And, you know, we really put pressure on them to, um, you know, uh, uh, support this. And that was a, a lot of, a lot of that was because they received 10, 15 emails about, you know, this legislation and this, you know, student governing body that they just thought they'd put on their resume and attend a meeting or two every month. And students don't lobby other student representatives in the Residence Hall Association. Like, it's not, you know, they don't get people, uh, you know, advocating for one thing or another usually. So that was, you know, something that they definitely took note of. Um, and, you know, uh, you guys can read, not read the slide too, but, um, you know, uh, just utilizing uh, tools on, on the internet. Uh, Oh, there's Irina. I'm gonna call you out. Um, <laughs> Irina's doing a great job right now with uh, IamGoodSam.com. It's a the Maryland statewide um, Good Samaritan policy. She's actually uh, interning for DPA this this semester in DC and uh, working on uh, state level Good Samaritan policy um, things like that. And uh, you know, on IamGoodSam.com, it's a place where uh, parents or students or any member of the community can sign on to the petition and uh, they can also join our list, you know, if they want to be updated about, about uh, what's going on with the campaign or if they want to see if they can do anything about it. Um, yes, and uh, I think that's about it that's on I Am Good Sam. Um, I think I'm going to go to the next one. Facebook. Right. <laughs> Facebook. You guys, uh, most of you are students, so I'm not going to spend too long telling you how to, you know, create events and invite people to them and post status updates and encourage people to, you know, uh, do whatever action it is that's needed to create that change on your campus, whether it's lobbying or whether it's showing up at a meeting or whether it's, uh, you know, uh, signing an online petition uh, or even, you know, volunteering to uh, go collect petition signatures out, out on the field. Um, so, yeah, you guys know, uh, John, did you want to say something yeah. about well, how, how many of you guys are familiar with, with Facebook? I don't know, it sounds like a silly question, right? How many of you guys are familiar with using it um, for campaigning and organizing? Okay, great, so you know how to use. So, so great, I just wanted to make sure that the majority of the people understand that. So for those of you who don't, Facebook allows you to, one, create a group. So you can create a group for your SSDP chapter. Then you can associate events with that. So let's say your meeting's coming up or uh, um, uh, you're bringing a speaker from law enforcement against prohibition. You create that event, you message and invite a lot of members. They have all that information right there on their calendar and it keeps them up to date. So it's a really, I don't, I don't know what SSCP would be if it weren't for Facebook. Let's put it that way. 